Resident Evil Extinction is the Mila Jovovich mega blockbuster hit movie where she showed the world what it looks like to do an entire movie of filler in a franchise that's already nothing but filler. Speaking of, it starts off by just playing the first movie again because filling 87 minutes is really hard to do. But like everyone else, the movie only remembers the laser scene and that normal hospital with the falling pizza cutters before she's taken out by the flying saucer gun. This version is so much better than the original. After dumping her into the pile of dead Milas, the real movie can finally begin. To the movie's credit, it lets you know right away that if you're holding out hope that this franchise can redeem itself, the virus didn't just wipe out human life. Lakes and rivers dried up. Then you can eat shit. So the virus kills fucking water, but whatever, because it turns out being a pile of dead bodies is just a flesh wound. And when she's not doing that, she's trying to save this baby, which is a trap obviously because there's no way a baby would ever agree to be in this you bitch that's a bit harsh but fair <laughs> then the movie goes from fucking stupid to total dog shit you show the bag by the way that's his mom of course, every time mama. because a mom cheering on her rapist son is the kind of shit people want in a Resident Evil movie. Then again, maybe it's just a Utah thing. Thankfully, he's a bitch who dies with one kick. Jesus Christ, he's dead! So they respond by letting out Lady God Dogs, who immediately attack them. <laughs> and we can pretend this never happened. Now we get a harsh dose of what it's really like in a post-apocalyptic world where the most important things are eyeliner and keeping those teeth sparkling white. But for the zombies, they're just working hard to make an honest living and provide for their families, like Stevie, who has three kids and a wife with type 2 diabetes and works at this convenience store that's really been struggling since there's only like a hundred people who are still alive. Oh, son of a bitch! That is really not helping! Sorry about this, Stevie. You say that, but it was like a hundred yard shot. I'm not buying it was an accident. Now the pump's not working. And after trying everything she can think of, and seeing Stevie is being a lazy fuck, she goes to complain to the manager. But the manager is doing one of those swinging nap things, so she jacks her diary and tells Stevie she gets there's a crow eating his eye. But she's the customer, and this is total bullshit. Now we're back with these guys who forget what movie they're even in. Gonna rent me a barn up. To be fair, I'm pretty sure the movie did too. It also never tells us why they're even in here, but when you have the chance to kill off one of your main characters stupidly, you just have to go for it. <laughs> then he remembers, oh yeah, the only time anyone ever dies is when they split up, so they should probably stop doing that. Luckily, you can barely see the tiny scratch, so we can just forget about it, and I'm sure it'll never come up again. Then we get a special appearance by Gary fucking Busey, who spends the entire movie doing intellectual things. Just kidding. He goes full Gary Busey. Now she's reading all the juicy details from the manager's diary, including what Stevie's really like when we get this game changer. Turns out this isn't just the worst map of Alaska anyone has ever seen, but the exact location of a town or some shit. I guess the name's not important, since Alaska's so small and this giant circle's good enough, or maybe she should have read the fuck 
freaking date. But she is under a lot of stress, what with her bike and the desert, trying to get out of being in this movie by just floating the fuck away whenever she's not looking. Nice try, Earth. But you ain't getting out of this shit that easy. The next day, the eyeliner lady wakes up bright and early, ready to get a fresh start. <laughs> Holy fucking shit! While everyone's losing their shit because there's a pissed off crow outside, beat down of its fucking mind, she uses her deep knowledge of ornithology Keep quiet. to get the situation under control. <laughs> Never mind, giving him the silent treatment just pisses him off more. Because that's what it always does, you goddamn idiot. Damn it. Now it's their turn, and they one up her on the stupid by attacking the hundreds of birds with tens of bullets. House knows he needs to bring his A game to compete with these heavy hitters, so he does the only thing he could think of crash the giant bus into this tiny pole. While they could easily just back up and go around it, f that, they're gonna move everyone to the van instead. If you're wondering how they can fit 30 something people into this little area, don't worry, they got that covered. They know most of them are gonna die doing this stupid shit anyways. So it should all work itself out. Then son of a bitch, they let a little thing like a zombie apocalypse distract them from their 100,000 mile spark plug replacement. And now it's spitting fire all over the place. He's thinking now would be a great time for their Mary Sue to show up, but she can't believe he would call her a Mary Sue. So after she blows up all the bad guys with her thoughts, she demands an apology. Then later, he introduces her to their leader. She's the one who put this convoy together. And has this whipped cream trick she's not gonna believe that comes in handy way more often than you'd expect. Which is nice because she's also a fucking idiot. They were all talking about what you did, and they're scared. Then tell them someone that can explode zombies with their fucking mind is really useful in a world overrun by zombies. So if they have a problem with that, then they can eat shit. Plus, she found this juicy diary that not only has the deets on who Stevie was crushing on, but also that stupid Alaska thing. Alaska? I don't know. I didn't fucking draw it, but I think that's what it's supposed to be. This convoy trusts me with their lives. Oh, really? And how's that been working out? So now she's being all pissy since she got put in her place and I'm pretty sure is trying to sabotage them. This. Vegas. It's the only place we're sure to find gasoline. That's the dumbest shit they've ever heard. Vegas is too damn dangerous. Yeah, that place is gonna be crawling with them sons of bitches. And there's no chance they'll ever do that. Vegas is really bad. Oh my God, that is so brilliant. They are all in. There, they find a shipping container and can hear the cries of people who are trapped inside. They tell them to just hold tight. They're not gonna let them die in there. They're gonna die out here. It's not clear where or why they were being shipped in the first place or how this gets them closer to Alaska. But we do get to see her legendary leadership skills and a whole bunch of hip tosses and jump kicks before doing the classic flying spinner to carry white combo. But oh shit, she freezes up and forgets her line, which is the not Mary Sue, blows everything up again and rides away on a magical rainbow unicorn. And oh yeah, that little scratch he got like three days ago, he figures now is as good of a time as any and tries eating his co-star like he's Steven Seagal or something. <laughs> this whole thing is turning into a colossal failure and she snaps out of it to remind her it was all her idea. Meanwhile, Jorah's curing his grayscale 
and doing it in a Resident Evil movie is somehow better than the pile of shit that show turned into. Just die. Nice try, bro. But there's plot armor for everyone because that show got fucking stupid. Now, they're trying to break in, but son of a bitch, there's a fence, so that's not happening. You know it. They had a good run, but know when they've been beat, so they say their goodbyes before heading their similar ways. But oh shit, he's going the wrong way and doesn't want to look like an idiot by having to flip a bitch after that whole emotional goodbye thing. <laughs> so he just goes straight and hopes for the best. Satisfied that he managed to pull it off, he celebrates with his self-rolled tobacco like a total psycho. They all try warning him how dangerous smoking can be, but it's too late. In a tragic twist, the fence opens up for mysterious reasons right around the same time. Then, she shows why she's the leader and makes the gutsy decision to take like 20 people in this helicopter all the way from Nevada to Alaska. You're not coming? She starts thinking of all the reasons this is really fucking stupid and not gonna work, but there's so many and not enough time, so she just says no. Now that they're gone, she can finally do whatever and this shit can end. And I guess now she's a star child or some shit. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's fucking stupid. Never mind, it's just a giant baby her. Perfectly normal shit. And now I think it's dead. Way to go. Anyways, back to normal shit. Not baby Mila and Jora, who somehow messed up the grayscale cure, which is literally just cutting it off. I swear to God, that show still pisses me off. But anyways, they do some run-of-the-mill tentacle hand fighting. Then mix it up a bit by Fusro dying each other. Then he thinks he has her right where he wants her. <laughs> Sorry, bro, but she says you don't. And her husband wrote this, so I'm going with her. Now it's the epilogue that completely forgets the virus ate all the water. But who cares? Because the important thing is she's threatening these people. Because I'm coming for you. We don't know or care about. And there's a f ton of baby Milas that we really don't care about. The only thing we do care about is that poor Stevie is still there.